Hi, I'm from Brazil. I have a question. Even with the customized command, do I need to use the page object? Thanks. Well, thank you for that question. Uh, because uh, just recently I asked on LinkedIn uh, on, on the strategies around, uh, around selectors. So I, I was curious, like, what do you use for uh, as your go-to strategy for like handling selectors in uh, in general, right? Because uh, there's this we all read the blog, right? Don't use page objects in Cypress, um, which demonstrates how, how how well you can like handle stuff in your application and how you can like inject the state and you don't need to use a page object to get to that state, right? But that just covers one aspect of, of page object uh, because page objects are really used. And I honestly, if I have to be honest, I didn't really know how widely this is used. Uh, page objects are used also for like handling selectors because you, you, you like put the definitions of your selectors off that page so you can just like easily uh, access them. And so I asked like, when we talk about selectors, which one is your strategy? Is it page object? You have a central file module where you just put all of your selectors or you use it, or you have uh, your application as a source of true. You just use data attributes or something like that, or you have another. And these are basically the results. So page objects are 72%. Um, I, I do have a f quite a big following with like people that use Cypress, but I, I think it's not only people that use Cypress that uh, that voted in here, and it seems like page objects are like massively, massively more popular than uh, than whatever uh, whatever uh, else that uh, people might use. I was surprised by the the number of like having a central file, like a module or something. It's it's interesting. Uh, feels to me like that might be hell of a thing to maintain, although the central module could sl still be split into parts, essentially creating these small chunks of, of like logic or something. And, um, and uh, yeah, and in the app, uh, it's, uh, it's nice to see that people, people use that because I'm honestly a big fan of that approach because it like takes away so much other trouble but I understand that if you are not in any way in control of the application you are testing, then uh, then you just have to use something else. You just have to have that stored somewhere. And if that selector changes, you need to like, uh, it, it can happen without you knowing. And then you like need to adjust your tests and you... Uh, yeah, like the, the the setup is important here. Uh, so yeah, Mike, what what is your uh, strategy in here? What what would you put in uh, this uh, poll? Did you yeah. vote? <laughs> um, <laughs> definitely not page objects, and the reason why is just because, at least it, in my experience at Lattice, they they actually had it so before i joined lattice they they implemented um cypress with page objects and what i found with page objects was the the problem was that they were implementing it just to implement just like i look at page objects as an abstraction mm -hmm. and in general when you create there is a such thing as too much abstraction right yeah, definitely and agree. so um, so if you're creating a page object every single time, you're basically forcing an abstraction, if that makes sense. And so, um, you know, so you're, you're, so I would say if you're going to use an abstraction, only use it if you need it. And if it makes sense, um, uh, not across the board for, for the, for the whole project, you know, um, the other thing is that they already had data attributes, um, implemented already oh, okay so it was already in there um now for many engineers um uh accessibility is important and with accessibility you have selectors right so if you're 
application is actually accessible, then um, then you you have good you have decent selectors um, to use. Yep. So there's there's that as well. Um, and then just kind of as a fallback, if you didn't have any either of those, you can select like say it's a field, right, or a button. Um, it's a submit button. You can say I want to I want to select. I want to get. Or you could use side dot contains, you know, button and and uh, and submit right as the text, and um, and that in my in my opinion is very. Um, very readable. <laughs> and so creating a page object on top of that, while it, while it does create an abstraction, it's unnecessary because your, 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 uh, your, your, uh, your test is already very readable. Mm -hmm. So if you're not adding any additional readability, uh, or maintainability, there's no reason to add another file that needs to be maintained. And then you're just kind of hopping back and forth. Yeah. The other thing I found too is that if you are going to use page objects, it does take some discipline. In that, for example, um, I found that many page objects, based on the name of the method, um, were not actually. It wasn't interpreted as what I thought. So mm -hmm. if you go into the method, I found that they were actually more things that were or different things that were being done. Um, that uh, the, the name alone, you couldn't, you couldn't really tell, you know, whether it be adding additional assertions in there or selecting something that something else in addition, um, there's all kinds of other stuff that, that can happen. And so that kind of leads to difficulty with, um, with debugging. So yeah. um, that ends my rant on page objects. <laughs> all right. Uh, well, <laughs> let, let me dead, ask you a but... question. Cause I, I, I think I had a, quite firm stance on on page objects as well uh in fact i i believe i do have a video where it says like don't use page objects which uh, given the the knowledge that i have today compared to that i have had then i think i would maybe not be so so harsh on on this uh on this method uh, not because of the abstraction uh, uh, aspect of it. I, I think that still stands, right? Uh, that that still stands. Like the, it, it's it's still uh, like doing too much abstraction is not a good thing because you are essentially hurting your maintainability. Uh, or you could, right? It's it's not a rule, but you, it it could easily happen to you. Uh, when talking about selectors, uh, like we, uh, you and I, we both have a situation where we do have access to the source code, uh, to, to the repository of the application when, that we are working with. So adding data CY or data ID or data whatever selectors uh, feels really natural. It's, it's the best way for us, right? Uh, but there are situations where you either like work for a client, right? You work uh, in an agency that provides testing and they, they want to have their testing done with Cypress because that's the new cool thing, right? Uh, and you don't mm -hmm. really have a good access to the, to the application you are testing. You're essentially creating test automation. And in that case, when, when this option is like out of the window, uh, what would be your strategy of uh, of doing that would you just rely on classes would you uh not take the project <laughs> or uh what if you were to think out loud what what would be your strategy here yeah so it'd be a combination of um using um uh, contains which is really boring it's not fancy but <laughs> it does get the job done Yep. You know, if I want to select by the the text content, it's very clear what exactly is being, you know, is being queried. So there's that. Um, and then you can also um, create custom commands for more complex interactions. Um, so I would do that or use something like DOM testing library, mm -hmm. right? Where you can... Um, what is it like you can find by label you can um that's actually the one that i probably use the most with with uh, dom testing library 